Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're all doing really well out there today. In this video, we're gonna do something a little different. This isn't going to be a tutorial, but if you saw the thumbnail and the title of this, you already know that. So what we're gonna do today is actually take a look at a new project from Proxmox. This is the Proxmox Data Center Manager. A couple of things about this before we get in. Uh, the first one is this is still an alpha. Please, 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 do not uh, deploy this in production. Uh, this is still very much an alpha. We are currently at version 0 0.1.7. So again, this is still very, very early. Uh, the second quick thing here is I wanna thank uh, Nighthawk ATL for bringing this to my attention over on Discord this morning. Uh, super appreciate that. Um, and uh, basically he sent me a couple of links, which we're gonna take a look at. And uh, and then, uh, then I deployed it. So uh, I would definitely put this in a VM, I think to start with. Again, this is alpha, this isn't, this isn't production ready. Uh, there are still some things that obviously need some work. Um, but we're not gonna go super in depth on this. Uh, we're just gonna kind of take a quick look. We'll take a look at a couple of the pages that are on there, on the on the Proxmox, uh, on the Proxmox stuff, on their servers, on their uh, on their stuff, and then we'll take a look at my uh, my setup here. We'll talk about a couple of different things there. But um, but again, this is just kind of a, a, a first look, first impressions kind of thing, not a tutorial uh, outside of a couple of little things that I want to demonstrate. Um, but yeah, I guess with that said, let's let's jump over. Let's jump over to here. Um, do, 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 that's the roadmap. Uh, here we go. Okay, this this was released this, uh, well, this morning at 2.22. Uh, so uh, like four o'clock this morning or something, my time. Uh, anyway, uh, here we are, we're on the forums. This is the Proxmox Data Center Manager first alpha release. And it says they're excited to announce the new uh, alpha preview of the Proxmox Data Center Manager. This is an early stage version of the software, giving you a first impression at what we've been working on and a chance to collaborate. So um, yeah, that's kind of what I said, but but they probably worded it better. Um, Next, we've got what is <clears throat> Proxmox Data Center Manager. Uh, the Data Center Manager project has been developed with the objective of providing a centralized overview of all of your individual nodes and clusters. It also enables basic management like migrations of virtual agents, or sorry, virtual guests, without any cluster network requirements. I love that. Um, for the longest time, if I've, so when I'm, when I'm, deciding whether or not I want to add uh, a VM, an LXC, whatever, um, to my to my, my my official home lab, uh, that, that uh, HL15 that I've got. Um, first, it has to go on my demo server. I've got two Proxmox servers. I've got the HL15, and I've got a little N100 mini PC that I do my testing, my tutorials, that sort of thing on. What I've been doing, if I wanna move something from my testing slash demo server over to my production server, I run a backup. I've got my two nodes, uh, my two data centers uh, connected via a backup server, a Proxmox backup server and then I, I, I back it up and then I restore it on the other server. This, using this means you don't have to do that. Um, you can if you want, but again, they're just trying to make things as simple as possible. So it says, why release an alpha? I love that question. Although still in early stages of development, we felt it important to provide interested users and potential developers with any insight or with, with an early insight into our newest project. This alpha version is intended to get your feedback, test core features, and collaborate with you. And I love all of that. One of the things that I noticed while I was setting this up, while I was kind of doing some testing, I've got both of my, my Proxmox data centers connected to the virtual machine that is my Proxmox data center manager. Um, I noticed that on uh, on my HL15, it wasn't pulling data, uh, like hard drive, uh, CPU, RAM, it wasn't pulling any of that information into, uh, into the dashboard, which we're gonna take a look at here in a moment. And the reason for that is, is because I, it, it doesn't meet the requirements, right? My HL15 Proxmox server currently does not meet the, the basic requirements of this. Um, I, don't, I don't wanna read too much more through this other than in the FAQ, um, what is the Proxmox or which Proxmox VE version is supported? Uh, currently, uh, the minimum required Proxmox VE version is 8.3. Uh, my HL15 is like 8.2.4, I think. Um, so while I can communicate with it and while I can do a couple of things with it, it's not fully supported. Um, but it says, um, 
during the alpha phase, we will only support the latest Proxmox VE version and encourage frequent updates or upgrades from both PDM and PDE as new features are developed in lockstep. So there, it sounds to me like they're going to be developing um, uh, Proxmox Data Center Manager, like they said, kind of in, in, in the same pace at the same time with Proxmox Virtual Environment. So they will be probably releasing features uh, on both that will synchronize with each other in a very compatible way. Pro or, yeah, Proxmox has always been, from my experience, really, really good at doing that. That's why I love them so much. So like they've, they've, another other quick thing here, because I'm sure it'll come up. Uh, will other Proxmox projects be supported? Yes, support for Proxmox backup server is planned um, for other pro uh, Proxmox projects, Mail Gateway, Offline Mirror. We will see how they can be integrated after the, for, after the first stable release of the data center manager. So that's what's currently going on. Uh, as far as like system requirements, that sort of thing, I'm gonna let you guys uh, kind of look through some of that because I don't, I don't want to waste your time by just reading this page to you. It's kind of a, it's kind of a long page, uh, but again, there's also um, this wiki page over here that you can take a look through as well. Everything in this video will be linked in the video description if you want to check that out. Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of that's how I was brought into this. Again, uh, Nighthawk ATL over on Discord sent me these two links, um, and so I deployed it in a VM on my Synology. So that's how I'm just doing some testing with it at the moment. If we jump over to my Proxmox Data Center Manager, this this is our dashboard. Um, we can see that it, we're on, again, 017 there. It still very, very clearly says alpha up there. So again, please, please don't deploy this into production. You won't have a good time. Um, but here we can see uh, that, the, that all of the remotes can be added. I'm sure they'll probably do something different with some of this up here. Um, so don't don't pay too much attention to a lot of this, I guess. Uh, just know that currently we've got remotes, we've got in virtual virtual environment nodes, there are two online, everything can be reached. Our virtual machines, we've got three VMs running, those are all on the HL15. Um, we've got uh, 18 uh, Linux containers or LXCs running with 27 stopped. And again, that that is that is all numbers that are combined between uh, between my demo server here and um, and my HL15, I believe. Um, running stop. Yeah, that all makes sense. Uh, now that I've now that I've looked, we're all good to go there. No valid subscriptions on anything. I don't do the the enterprise subscriptions on anything. Um, if we take a look at this next little section over here, we've got guests, nodes, and nodes over here with the highest CPU usage and memory usage, that sort of thing. Uh, that's what these three boxes down here are. Again. Um, because we're not able to fully communicate with the HL15, because I don't have the most current version of Proxmox of VE installed on it, uh, I do on my demo server, not on my production server. I know it seems backwards, but whatever. Um, because I don't have the most current version of Proxmox uh, 8.3 installed on my HL15, I can't get this data. I initially noticed it when I was over here on this remote. Like I get some information here, um, but nothing, nothing over here in these visualization charts on the right side of the page. Uh, however, if we go over to like the Proxmox demo, we can actually see uh, what all of this data has looked like over the course of the last hour, approximately, uh, which I really dig, which this may encourage me to remember <laughs> to update my, my HL15 to the most current version, but my wife's watching Plex and I don't wanna interrupt that. So, so that's, kind of, that's, that's kind of the homepage, that's also kind of the remote stuff, but we're gonna, we're gonna keep plowing through this. Um, there's a search up here, I actually haven't, Oh yeah, so when you do a search, I just typed in like HL and it's giving me everything on the HL15 here. Uh, as far as like uh, LXCs, we've got our VMs down here, uh, all kinds of really good information. Uh, just by just quickly searching, I can do like uh, prod, um, no, or sorry, demo, right? Do the kind of the same thing there. Um, and we can kind of see everything that's going on. I think if we click this, it should, yeah, it should open up. It opens up the data center, not the actual um, like guest, which is kind of whatever. I'm sure that will get fixed, but it is what it is for the time being. Um, so back to our dashboard, let's take a look. We've got notes, we can add notes if we wanna do that. Uh, configuration, um, so basically we've got our, we can set our time zone, our server time, our DNS, network interfaces. We've got all of these options in here. Um, under other, under configuration, uh, web auth uh, TFA, 
Uh, currently, nothing I can, oh, there we go. Oh, 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 right. I'd actually select which one I wanted uh, and then click edit and then and then you can fill in the information for, uh, for your, I believe that's two-factor authentication there. Um, we've got access control. So uh, basically user management and two-factor authentication here. Uh, so I think the first one was for provider and then this one is actually for enabling it for the individual users. I could be wrong, but that's what I think it is. Um, certificates, um, so we've got our, 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 our proxy uh, PEM file here. We've got Acme domains, counts, and challenge plugins. Um, so this is just for local certificates for, uh, for the data center manager. Um, under administration, uh, we've got updates, repositories, uh, and syslog tasks, you know, all of this kind of stuff. Um, so API error failed to collect metrics, and that's again because I don't have the newest version uh, on my HL15. That's why it's throwing all of these errors because it's not implemented on that version. So that makes total total sense to me. Repositories again. Um, so they don't have a uh, do, do, do test. Yeah. So the Proxmox data center manage test repository may pull in unstable updates and is not re recommended for production use. Like I said earlier, don't put this in production. Please, you'll, you'll hate yourself if you do. I truly believe that. Um, next, we've got a shell, just like you would expect, uh, like we're very familiar with uh, regarding Proxmox. We've got remote, so we can add a virtual environment. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, we can edit an environment or we can remove an environment all from the, the root of that menu item. And then we can jump into uh, our actual remote connections here. So like our, our Proxmox uh, demo remote here, subscription status nodes, guests, uh, and then all of the information about those, uh, and of course, more resource usage over here on the right side. What I love about this, though, is actually a couple of different things. And it's actually this, this little section down here. I wish, man, I really wish I could drag that up and make it bigger. Uh, but so we've got, our, we've got our data center right here, which is Proxmox Demo. And then we've got our different, our different guest systems on here. Um, of course, the first several are LXCs. And then down here, we've got some VMs. And what I love about this is, um, like if I click Astro Luma, this is something I've been testing, I can toggle the power on it. I can power that off, I can power them on. Um, I can, in theory, open this up. Again, it's not going to take me to, maybe, maybe, hold on, maybe like that. Okay, I, it, it highlights it. I'll, I, I dig that. Okay, so like when I let me close these, I'm going to demonstrate that again, right? So Astro Luma right here, I'm going to click this little out arrow. And it's going to take us right to that, that guest that LXC on there. Uh, whereas if I do like um, infinite, oh, no, let, let's scroll down a bit. Let's do Hortus Fox. I'm actually going to do a video on Hortus Fox here soon. If I click that, it's going to take me over into the new page and highlight that guest. So I dig that. That's actually pretty cool. Um, but the other thing that you can do here is you can, from here, um, click uh, this little airplane, this paper airplane, and migrate. So because we're already we're already connected to the demo server, I can select my target remote and say the HL15, um, and then I can put in you know like a, a VM ID, and then I can say I want to delete the source. I don't. I'm not going to do that. But you could delete the source if you wanted to do that. So once the migration was complete, it would delete uh, the original, basically, right? Uh, and then you can also de do detailed mapping for the target source for storage and networking that sort of thing. Now, from my experience, when I did my testing with this earlier, again, this is an alpha. When I put in like a custom uh, target VM ID, um, it didn't change it. Like, it, it just, it, it picked one at random and was like, here's, here's what it is. Again, this is an alpha. I'm not super worried about that yet. Um, but just know that you may, you may run into some finicky stuff, but that could have also been because I didn't have a compatible version of Proxmox on the destination. So there's any number of things that could have gone wrong there. It's probably my fault if we're being completely honest here. So, um, but just with a simple click, uh, you can, you can migrate a VM or an LXC from one node to another without having to do the, uh, the, the, the Proxmox backup server step in the middle, uh, or without having to do any clustering. And I absolutely love that. I think they've done a really cool thing there. Um, so that's that, right? So let's, let's do this. Let's, Let's go back to our remote um, and then let's, let's select our Proxmox demo here. We're gonna remove it. We're gonna add this back. I wanna show you how easy this is to add. So 
that should go away uh, here in a moment. There it goes. So now we've just got the HL15, right? But now I want my Proxmox demo server back. So what I'm gonna do is click add Proxmox VE. The server address uh, is this one right here. I'm just gonna grab, oops, I'm just gonna grab the IP address and the port. Like so, now it wants a fingerprint. If you're familiar with adding a Proxmox backup server to uh, a Proxmox VE server, you know how easy it is to get the fingerprint. Um, it's not necessarily the same here. There is no little button in the middle of the page that says here's where to get your fingerprint, right? I think it was like somewhere over here. Anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to shell um, and we're just gonna run PVE node space cert space info. Like so, we're gonna give it a second. And what we're looking for is the fingerprint under pvesssl.pem. We're just gonna grab this, like so, right click it, click copy, go back, paste that in and click connect. Connection okay, that means we did it right. If you grab the other uh, fingerprint from the other, uh, from the other little spot up here for the pve root ca.pem, it's gonna throw an error, it's not gonna let you connect. That's how you know you did it wrong. So grab, grab the, the pve SSL um, uh, fingerprint down there. So now we've got connection okay, we can move on to settings. So a remote ID, it's just whatever you wanna name it. Um, I'm gonna call it uh, prox demo. Uh, so for the username and the password and the realm, you can put in your username and password or you can use a token. For the sake of keeping things simple here, I'm just gonna do uh, my root user and password. My realm is at Pam. And then the, the API token name, uh, I'm just gonna call this uh, P PDM admin one, two, three. Um, if you disconnect and reconnect, you need to give the API token name something different each time. Otherwise it'll have a bit of a hissy fit. So I'm just gonna do that again for the sake of testing here. I'm gonna click scan. Okay, scan okay, we're good to go. Let's move on to our endpoints. Uh, here we can see what our options are here for the host name and the fingerprint. Uh, it's gonna give you both the IP address and port, as well as the host name of the device or the, the data center. The fingerprints should in theory be the same. Once we're happy with this, we can add more if we want to, but we're just gonna keep it simple here. We're gonna click summary. Uh, all of this looks good, so we're gonna click finish. And there it is, there is our prox demo right there. Here in a moment, as per usual with uh, prox mocks, there it is. And here it is, everything is up and running. So um, that's that's kind of the general gist of Proxmox Data Center Manager. Again, this is still very early alpha. Please, please, please don't, don't deploy this in production. Definitely jump in, check it out, test it, see what you like, see what you don't. If you can help them, do it, that'd be amazing. Um, but I would love to know what you guys think about this, what your thoughts are, what you'd like to see, all of that in the comment section down below. Uh, as I said earlier in this video, everything will be linked in the description if you wanna check that out. But I think with that said, I do wanna go ahead and wrap this up. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks so much for spending a few minutes of your day with me here today. And I'll talk to you in the next video.